Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0 .90 Beta. In this episode I hope to conduct a few more launches with payloads destined for Duna and then we'll start making transfers to Duna. I still haven't decided about my training situation. I think I've got to hold off on that for now. Uh, let's conduct the Duna stuff which uh, the transfer window is in four days so that's what we're aiming for right now. Uh, so this is a half moon which means that it's just a fuel tank uh, of course tapered like this so that it uh, can sit on top of the rocket without a fairing and it's got uh, well uh, close to an orange tank worth of fuel and oxidizer and and uh, we've got the RCS there reaction wheel lights uh, RCS pods and uh, these little guys so that it can uh, get into orbit around Duna and get to its destination it's got dual docking ports, a large docking port on the bottom and a uh, normal size docking port on top. So, yep, that's the idea. And of course, this is the transfer stage here. At 60 tons, it's at the capacity for this launcher. This is the Strider Light. And we can just go ahead with this. After this, we're going to do a launch of a refinery to Duna because I think we have uh, carbonite stuff, but not uh, water, uh, water refining stuff. And that refinery is going to attempt to land on the surface of Duna. That's a little bit dicey. It's expensive. And I'm not even sure I can put enough parachutes on. I don't think I'm going to be putting parachutes. I think I'm going to be trying to make a powered landing on Duna. And that's even worse. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I'll talk about that once we get to that. Let's just get this into orbit and get it all situated. And then we'll talk more about that. Okay, here we are. SAS is on. Throttle is up. And the carbonite mining station has water running out, but that's only because it has a whole lot of water. We're not scheduled to refuel that for another 91 days, so it should be alright, hopefully. Alright, everything looks like it's a go. Let's get the resources up. And launch. Okay, looks like a good start. So I'm in sort of a confusing time as far as pretty much everything. Uh, first of all, I started a solar system colonization series. It's not colonization with a K, it's not using MKS or OKS. It's actually using planetary base ink. Oh, I don't want that role. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit different. But um, yeah, so that's going on, but that'll take a long time. That's even more complicated than this, than this, if you can imagine that. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. A new challenge. Uh, that's mostly that's going to be live streamed, and then I'll chop the videos up for YouTube uh, with uh, post commentary. Aside from that, we've got 1.0.5 coming out. They just did the the previews on KSP TV on Twitch this weekend. Things are looking good, but of course that won't affect this series, but I will want to play around with that in my other series. Uh, Sandbox CDB will be getting a new start thanks to those parts and that stuff. So basically a little bit, there'll be a se season 2 of Sandbox CDB is the plan. Um, aside from that, uh, Fallout 4 is coming out and I do, I have purchased it, I, I have preloaded it, and I'm eagerly awaiting it to be unlocked. And so I'll be playing that. I'll probably, I, I'll definitely be playing it on live stream. I don't know if you guys want to see videos of it, because frankly, videos of everything except for Kerbal Space Program have not done particularly well on my channel, uh, to be brutally honest. So, yeah, uh, if, if you guys want to see that, uh, drop me a line. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know how to edit something like Fallout 4 in any particular way. So, we'll see. Okay, we're coming up to booster separation here. Booster set. Okay, and they are away. So, just as a point of clarification, uh, Soul System Colonization isn't going to in any way take the place of this series, and that's because uh, that's using Planetary Base Inc, and I'm going to be practicing using that mod. I'm still learning how to use MKS and OKS here. So, uh, yeah, uh, my, my goal here is still to learn these this set of mods. 
and I'll be using a different set of mods over it with the real solar system and realism overhaul and at some point uh, this is all going to come together hopefully in 1.1 I will then be able to put all the mods together that I have uh, learned how to use and maybe create something spectacular but I'm still in the learning process of all these mods and so that's what I'm doing here and there okay let's keep it to a hundred kilometers for now and we will we're not on a particularly good trajectory actually I should have flattened that a lot earlier I think I've been playing real solar system too much I forgot I should do the pitch maneuver a lot quicker with this So yeah, with the new water dynamics that they're going to have in 1.0.5, just as a heads up, I, I think they keep talking about ditching in the water. I, I, I'm not thinking of ditching in the water. I'm thinking of making the water a place to launch things from and retrieve things from properly. I think that'd be much more interesting. So taking a good look at alarm clock, we've got that transfer. We've already got some assets that are meant to be sent to Duna. We've got two resupplies for food, water, and oxygen. We've also got a scanner, and so we got to be sending those first. Drez, we've got a transfer window. We'll see what Drez needs, but that's down the road. Okay, we'll have this stage deorbit. We're only losing 67 meters per second from that. So let's uh, check that that separation is correct. Okay, set. And ignition. Oh dear. I don't really have solar panels on here, do I? Oh dang it. You'd think I would remember the solar panels by now, but no, no, no solar panels. Okay, well we'll have to be very careful with our electric charge then. That's all that can be said about that. That should do it. 109 by 97 and we have plenty of fuel for the transfer okay so yep this is well we don't have a maneuver to do just yet so we'll just leave it here and try to remember it's over here for the transfer okay so here is the Duna refinery and as you can see it's actually a hundred ton payload on a strider launcher so full strider launcher this time and it's meant to be landed on Duna and then connected up to a base as well. You can see these sort of extendable ports that we have also seen on the moon base. And that is the setup. It's got the drills. It's got containers for life support. It's got place for peoples to be. For Kerbals to do their refining thing. Uh, landing legs, small ones. But since it's uh, got a flat bottom, hopefully it's, it'll be alright. Uh, it's just mo meant to be resting on the surface directly, even without the without the landing legs. Um, we've got a docking port over here with a controller. Is that docking port facing the right way? No. Well, that's not much good, is it? Let's make sure that docking port is facing the correct way, shall we? That's just in case it needs to be refueled in orbit before it lands, really. It could theoretically get back to orbit from the surface of Duna if it refuels. So that's a thing. Uh, it's also got these little guys, the pipe endpoints, to connect up with stuff. It's pretty full featured. And uh, it's got drogue shoots. It's got eight drogue shoots. And I have no idea how those are going to do trying to carry a hundred ton payload. Now it's not, not going to be a hundred ton on the surface. Uh, let's take this off again. Let me reorient this so you can see it's actual delta V. Okay, uh, well, not that ways. Uh, so it's 2647. And you can see it's thrust away more than enough to deal with Duna. Uh, though not with Kerbin, obviously. It's gonna have the weird situation of applying thrust, uh, this away. So, <laughs> as it uh, makes its way to Duna, it's going to be... It's not going to be going traditional, let's put it that way. Uh, yep. It's an interesting little object. But so it'll be partially empty once we get to Duna because it will have expended all the fuel needed to make the Duna transfer. But And then we're going to expend more fuel before it sets actually sets down. 
still it's gonna be pretty darn heavy well we'll find out right this is all I could do uh, it's it's expensive but uh, we'll risk it okay everything else looks fine uh, the Delta V is a little bit worrying I just added the shoots sort of an, as an afterthought you know wondering whether I really needed the shoots or not uh, so that added some mass should be fine but it's pretty darn tight uh, uh oh I, I really don't need a full load of kerbals so I think this is probably a little bit dangerous to send them all at the same time how is our supplies on this vessel I don't know I can't check while it's not launched okay let's go back to the VAB and reconsider how many kerbals we want in here okay well you know what we've got a thousand days of food and oxygen and water actually more than a thousand days of water because that's what we're going to be doing all our stuff with but uh, yeah that that's a lot of that's a lot of food water and oxygen right there let's take a look at our crew oh this is our experienced crew if you will hmm well okay maybe we should get more experience on on Duna maybe this is a thing to do yeah okay um how about Greg Furt as well okay or maybe we should just send these three yeah uh, let's just send these three then we'll be we will be up without a one-star pilot let's let's ha let's reserve a one-star pilot one-star engineer one-star scientist and we'll send Nelbert okay yeah I think that's gotta be my plan alright so let's launch this now okay here we go and if you're wondering by the way we are not full of water here we've got uh, empty space on the water basically I loaded up with as much water as I could so that we can convert the water to fuel later on um, we just didn't have enough space for f more fuel and oxidizer but uh, this gives us extra fuel potential uh, even though it's more efficient to carry the liquid fuel and oxidizer um, we just didn't have the physical space to do that in what is already a pretty huge launch so yeah I decided to add a little bit of water into the mix uh, bring the whole payload to that hundred tons of course okay so that is the reason behind that looks like our crew is ready so uh, but the clamps don't all release at the same time that's a little bit weird Let's fix that. Okay, here we go. Let me try for a little bit of a better profile this time. By the way, I just checked, and uh, actually 1.0.5 has launched now, so I'm uh, I'm downloading it, and so we are in the process of 1.0.5 transition, I guess, if you will. Not on this series, obviously. This is gonna stay 0 0.90, but anyway, uh, right after this, I'll probably be playing 1.0.5 and seeing what's what's new and what's up. Such is the way of Kerbal. And I'll have a few hours of that before Fallout 4. Or at least testing out Fallout 4 to make sure that works. Like I said, very confusing time for me. Okay, we are past the speed of sound and everything is looking good. Gonna try and make this less steep than last time. For efficiency's sake. Okay, getting ready for a booster set here. Four boosters need to be recovered. Set. And they're off. Delta V looks good for orbit. Okay, coasting right along. No worries. 
looks like we can pretty much flatten out soon. The time to abwaps this is actually going up even at 15 degree pitch. Okay, well, we'll be close to getting into orbit on a single burn, but not quite there. I'm not willing to go into negative pitch, which would be necessary to really round it out like that. Okay, I'll stop at 100 kilometers here. Okay. Alright, uh, let's get rid of the fairings. Right. Let's hope I action group the solar panels. Yes, I did. It's got uh, these always open solar panels as well. It's nice to have extra solar panels. These are not the long ones. These are the, the rectangular ones. Well, you know, two by three. I shouldn't say rectangular. Of course, it's rectangular. Just to maintain looks. Okay, looking good for our three Kerbals so far. Now one thing we definitely don't have on this refinery is monopropellant, and there's no intention to convert the stuff we get into monopropellant, the water, or if we drill for some other resource. Well, actually, we can drill for other resources, by the way. Um, one of these is a water and minerals drill, and another is ore and substrate, and uraninite. Now, you might go, well, there's no place to con uh, contain all that. I've only got place to contain water. But it's got the uh, little docking ports, these little tubes, so it can connect to something, a tank to uh, contain ore, substrate, uraninite, or minerals. So we can have the entire process go on on the ground on Duna if that particular location has a lot of resources. If it's just as water, then that's all we've got. But, you know, that, I've thought of that, and so that's the idea. So we've got one of each type of drill here. Okay, so here we go for orbit. I'm just going to have this stage finish the burn, and uh, it'll tag along on the initial part of our burn to Duna. This is too heavy a thing to just discard 300 meters per second. Okay, uh, 104 by 97.5 or so. Not exactly the brightest idea to have these three in orbit for the four days before the Duna transfer. But, uh, yeah, we have them here now. And I'm going to time warp those four days, and then we're going to make some transfers. Because I don't think there's anything else I want to bring to Duna right now. Okay, we've got an approach to Duna with the Duna refinery, and it's... Got a periapsis of 600 kilometers. If we do 1,025.98 meters per second prograde, the uh, funny thing is, if I change this by 0 0.01, either way, it makes a huge difference. So, so yeah, let's not count on too much there. But uh, yep, let's turn to the node, and in about 10 minutes, we'll be on our way. Now we're gonna have a bit of a orientation problem because, as I mentioned before. These engines that we've got on the payload are pointed in an interesting direction in comparison to our normal orientation. And there's no controller that we can use to to get ourselves oriented properly, so I'm just going to have to wing it. Anyway, here we go. Okay, separation. And now, uh, orientation. So, smart ASS off. Don't have a whole lot of reaction wheel control. That's probably the wrong direction. Oh, is that the wrong direction? Yeah, that's the wrong direction. No, I don't want to roll. I don't want to roll. Let me get the engines started up first. Our Delta V is going to be a little bit confused by this, obviously. I think I'll just point at the at the radio vector there. Landing this is gonna be a pain considering how little control there is. Uh, probably need some sort of RCS. These these things don't gimbal much at all. I don't think they gimbal at all. At least given the way it controls right now. 
Um, okay, we seem to be deviating from the from the intended point here. I don't know why. Probably some fuel imbalance. Um, well, that fuel is being taken up. That fuel is being taken up. That's as intended. That should be balanced. Weird. We've also oh, we've got thrust limiting. Hmm. So these are actually overpowered. Maybe I'm, for the sake of the transfer, I could probably do a little bit more than that. Yeah, they, they were thrust limited because of Duna. I didn't want to overdo things. Beats me why I can't point out the vector, though. wonder if they can start LFO right now. Okay. Um, looks like they are. Obviously, we can't see because we're burning it at the same time, but... Yeah, it looks like it works. Efficiency 143%. Maybe it's because I'm running the engines at the same time. That's a little bit confusing to it. I don't know. Stop Alpha for now then. Okay, well now we're pointing at the vector. I mean, there's two large SAS units on this thing. I mean, uh, reaction wheels. And still it doesn't turn very well. Okay, let's get rid of that and see what's really happening. Getting real close now. Okay. Oh, too far. Okay, opposite direction. We don't have RCS, so we can't do fine tune adjustments very easily. Okay, it looks like 4,200 kilometers we'll have to do for now. We'll keep it there, and we'll just adjust it once we get into Duna SOI. Maybe that's not such a good idea. We should get a little bit closer ahead of time. Mm, let's see how positive normal works for us. Okay, actually nothing I do seems to make it any better than this, about 4,300 kilometers or so. So, we'll leave it there, we'll add the alarm, and we will in fact fix it once we get there. Not that SOI change though. Hmm, we want the other SOI change. Alright, well, we'll add this one first and we'll follow it out I suppose. But for now, we want to go to one of our other missions. We've got a bunch of stuff here. Uh, Duna Resupply 2. It'll be a little bit more straightforward if I do Duna Resupply 1 first, I think. Yeah, let's switch to that. Okay, here we go with Duna Resupply 1 on its way. This stage will cover the entire burn, so that's good because we've got the... The little, uh, whatchamacallit, 48.7S's facing the opposite direction. Uh, that's easier, we can just control from this docking port in that case, so it's not a big problem, not like with the refinery. But this is simpler anyway. So, we'll get it done just on this, and we'll probably carry this with us so that we can use it to make the first adjustment once we get into Duna SOI. Uh, this trajectory will take us once again to about the same uh, periapsis, uh, they'll probably end up being about 4,000 kilometers again. So that's the plan. Okay, we have a closest approach. We have an encounter. Okay, and this one's gotta be about 2,000 kilometers, so a little bit better. Let's add the SOI change. Okay, and I'll take care of bringing them out of the SOI and uh, getting the correct alarm set uh, off camera. I don't think I need to deal with that on camera unless there's some bug, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pretend that that's not a likely situation. And anyway, I'll just head on over to Duna Resupply 2. So we've got Duna Resupply 2 to send over. We've got the half moon that I launched in this episode. And this says Drez Scanner Pro, and it sure has enough Delta V for Drez. But I think I'm going to send this over to Duna just in case, and then we'll send another one up 
into orbit for Drez. So we've still got eight days for that. Uh, I know that's definitely something we need over at Drez, but... Uh, uh, well, I'll double check whether we need it at Duna or not before I send that over. Maybe we'll just wait for Drez. Okay, uh, so, but Duna Resupply 2 first. Okay, this one has the same story as the previous one. It's basically exactly the same, and the stage has enough for the transfer. And uh, we're right about at the nodes, so let's go. Okay, more food, water, and oxygen for Duna. Okay, here we go again. And mission number three is on its way to Duna with a periapsis of 2,000 kilometers or so, depending on how, well, once autosave finishes, and depending on how it wiggles, basically. Okay, so, yep, mission three, and now half moo. Now, with half moo, I'm going to do the locking battery trick. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna lock two of them, just in case. We have no way of recharging them, though. But at least we'll get on over to Duna and have some charge. I'm not the guy to turn it or do anything. It's got a drain all on its own. I don't know. I guess the probe core has its own drain. That's not very friendly. But I'm not going to use any extra with the SAS until I absolutely need to. Let me plot out the, the journey to Duna. Okay, that looks like another 2,000 kilometer periapsis in 82 days. I hope the missions don't arrive all like at the same time. Getting them pretty close. I don't think this engine generates power, let's find out. Nope, doesn't look like it. So, no luck there either. I don't think the 2477s do. Okay, we are on escape. Let's take a look at how it's going on the map view now. Okay, approach confirmed and... Encounter. Uh-oh. Ike encounter. Oh, that's a different uh, sort of situation. Mm, I think I'll just leave it then. Uh, let's take a quick look. Focus view. Uh, okay, maybe we can... Okay, there we go. Uh, Alright, closest approach yet. I don't know if we want to get this into a polar orbit, though. Uh, probably not. We'll fix that over there. Alright. Another alarm. I didn't add the alarm for Duna Resupply 2. So let me hop on over to Duna Resupply 2 to make sure I get that alarm and then check the situation around Duna, whether we need a scanner. I don't think so. I probably would have launched one if I needed one. And then I'll take care of these. But let me check check on those things. All right. Well, taking a look at the situation around Duna, there's no way we have a good scanner at Duna. We've got the CRT here, we've got the Duna station there. We, we've got no satellite in a polar orbit or anything that says that's a scanner anyway. So yeah, I guess the thing to do will be to send that thing that's called a Drez scanner over here and we'll just launch another Drez scanner. Okay, so that is the plan. Let me get that underway. Okay, we're all lined up and I think we might as well get going. We're gonna have to move on to the next stage on this, but that's no problem. Lots of Delta V here, as you can see, but uh, yep, here we go. Yeah, this was meant for the tough Drez transfers, remembering how, how unpredictable those mid-course plane changes are and how much Delta V you need to slow down at Drez in order to get into orbit. We might be a little bit early on this burn, it looks like, so I'm gonna throttle down. Yeah, in fact, I was duped by the previous transfers. This one is way quicker, so I'm gonna actually stop burning for a little bit and time warp to closer to the node. Okay, LV-909 out, set, and 
10487S. Well, thanks to the gap in between this video and the previous colonization video, I've probably forgotten something I meant to do. But that'll just be how it is for now. Okay, Duna periapsis of 2,800 kilometers sounds fine. This is gonna be a scanner anyway. It's gonna probably remain high to some extent, not that high. But, alright, it is on its way. I'll add it to the list. Okay, so five missions on the way to Duna. I will get these out of Kerbin SOI and get their proper the proper alarms on. I expect it will all be about 80 days, which means that we're going to be sending up the Drez scanner first. Uh, dealing with Space Tug Gamma and that asteroid, we'll have to make a decision on that. Um, and then, uh, and that's the one we're trying to eject out of the system. And probably we'll be dealing with the Duna stuff before we need to resupply the Carbonite Mining Station. Though potentially we'll uh, resupply that first. I'll see about that. We've got we've got stuff to deal with that the Kerbin Station core and I think the Kerbitat's probably let's let me take a quick look at the Kerbitat here. Kerbitat's got 456 days, so I don't think I need to have that alarm here. Yeah, I think we're all good there because we removed crew out of it. Uh, Carbonite mining station. Uh, it, it's, it, it, it's not, yeah, I, that's right, that's right, it's 86 days, 98 days, that's, that's right. Okay, so, that is the order of operations that we have right now, and I'm gonna go ahead and play some 1.0.5, uh, if you don't mind me being blunt. So, thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video, please do press like, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.